Good evening viewers, welcome back to today's episode of Straight Talks where we discuss about all the different issues that plague our society and the state. Lately there has been a lot of issues regarding the online classes and education that is quickly becoming too expensive for the common folk. Well, there is an imaginary talk of war that is raging between the two and in today's discussion we are going to discuss on the topic education and its romantic bourgeois affair featuring online classes. But before we move forward with the discussion, let's take a look at a short capsule that we have in store for you. Mahatma Gandhi once said, Education means the all-round drawing of the best in a child and a man, body, mind and spirit, while Tagore wrote, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free. At present, with the world fighting for survival, the act of slowing down for introspection is robbed. There is a mad rush and online classes are in full swing and assignments deadline are ringing wildly like alarm clocks. It is true that a teacher needs to keep the students occupied, but why does the act vivify the portrait of discrimination, biasness, differentiation, partiality and lopsided prejudice? No one is blocking the genuine intention to teach and to impart, but why does it wear the mask of harassment toppled by a Machiavellian ball? The romantic logic of a pen and a paper is magical. On a serious note, what one would call strict and the pseudo-urgency one creates is nothing but mental, psychological, cognitive, financial and a perceptual discriminatory torture. Let us not compare ourselves with the rest of the world, particularly not with the developed countries. India ranks 129th in the Human Development Index released by the United Nations Development Programme in 2019. Do not look far. Sri Lanka in the 71st position has a better rank than India. According to an updated data, Meghalaya has 369 higher secondary sections, out of which 250 are regular and 119 are private, in contrast to only 67 colleges only. The number of students that are dropping out of colleges is worrisome. When we talk of moving forward with online education in our state, we seek to leave out the 90% of the rural folks. And not to mention the assumptive 80% that do not have an access to meet the needs because of the plethora of problems. Aren't we instead moving backwards in time to the 19th century India, where only the elite upper class can afford education? We need to step up our game now. We need to look for ways and means to address the urban-rural educational gap if we are to move forward. Well, viewers, we are very fortunate today that we have two esteemed panelists with us. First, let me introduce Gong Felicita Majau. She is the uh, retired lecturer and also a housewife. She will also be representing from the side of the parents. And next up, we have Ba Rusivan Shampliang, who is the assistant professor. But before we move forward with the discussion, Kong Felic uh, Felicita, I would like to put a question forward to you. What is your take on the topic education and its romantic bourgeois affair featuring online classes? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, as for now, with, uh, with this uh, present uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic situation that is going on all over the world and also in our state, we have seen a, a drastic, a very sudden change uh, towards um, uh, in education and towards delivering education and learning. Now, uh, this uh, change, of course, is not, uh, I would not say it is sudden. It uh, had been there even before this uh, uh, pandemic uh, period. When you say about the uh, online classes and when you say about the burgeoning uh, 
uh, romantic bajoning affair of uh, online classes, we do understand that students are facing a lot of problems. Of course, the teachers also have been taken by surprise with this uh, onset of this pandemic, but uh, the major part of the uh, alarm has gone on to, uh, you know, with the students because starting from the very smaller classes, from the nursery classes, straight up to the secondary and higher secondary level, including the colleges and universities, all students have been uh, badly affected by this uh, pandemic um, with regard to education since all, uh, all schools were closed during the lockdown. So as a parent, as a parent, I myself, I have kids who are in school in different classes and um, I've got also concerns from other parents and uh, of course in our society we do understand that uh, we don't function um, in terms of equality. I mean uh, that is something very sad. It is there, it is uh, even uh, right now during this pandemic that divide in society is so apparent. It's very sad and uh, we have tried our best uh, as uh, you know as parents as citizens we have tried our best to also contribute as much as possible uh, extend our help in whatever ways we can but then at the same time during the lockdown we as parents are stuck in the house with our kids we are stuck in the house as, uh, with our kids and it was very sudden and this uh, particular um, lockdown has badly has badly affected our kids in such a way that because you you know many parents if you really uh, think of it i would say they are they are not uh, all of them are not educated all of them are not literate many major section of a society are daily wages they have to move out they are single parents they are also orphans and then there are children who are stuck in orphanages there are uh, you know children who are stuck in hostels stranded students so we'll come about that later on but uh, the one thing i would like to say is uh, i would like this discussion to highlight mm. the pathetic condition of a society with regard to education and with regard to uh, families who are really suffering because of this lockdown mm. I so think thank you so much mm. kong that was very insightful now i will move to ba shampliang here but you are a teacher yourself, yes. so there is no better person who can know about this situation better than you. So, sir, I would like to ask you, what is your take on online classes? Uh, going back to what you have uh, mentioned in the earlier question uh, regarding that bourgeois concept, if we look at the bourgeois concept, it came from the French and particularly it means uh, general way I will discuss um, somebody or a group of people who are financial whose financial background is good mm. and according to Marx and all it means that uh, they own the production that means they are uh, um, a class which uh, can control the society now if we look at this uh, pandemic and the way that the classes has been conducted through online, it seems that uh, this bourgeois concept has penetrated even in the class classes also. Of course, we cannot uh, deny the fact that it has been there all along since before even the pandemic. Mm. Uh, the educational system in India, if we look through history, is like a torn shoe of the British colonial regime. We just adopt whatever the British left us, and then we move on with that. And the kind of education that was there, it was first promoted to those bourgeois class, and then the leftover, sometimes they don't even get uh, primary or basic education. Mm. Now, that kind of education is something that uh, it's imparting knowledge 
but uh, without learning. And in this online classes which is going on now, during this pandemic and the lockdown, the same thing applied. Students, they gain knowledge through that online classes, whatever those who can afford to take it, but they don't learn a thing. So to me, and maybe on behalf of everyone in the teaching community, either they are doing it by themselves or they are being forced to do it, this is not a perfect time to conduct online classes. So give it, uh, take it or leave it, I think it's just a, a mad rush to the matter. That is very <coughs> beautifully put, sir. Like it is a mad rush to the matter. At this point of time, we are very fortunate that we are also being joined by the Education Minister, Mr. Lakman Rumboy. So he will be joining us through a video. There is this one question that ha I have put forward to him. So while the world is fighting for survival and many have died, most lower middle class people are fighting for two square meals a day at such a time. Do you think it is correct and it is justified for the teachers to take online classes? And does the government look into the matter as you know very well that there are also students who are being bombarded with too much of assignments? Will the government look into it. Let me hear from you, sir. This, as you rightly said, that there is a concern about these online classes all over the country, not only in the state of Mekhalia, and especially in the state of Mekhalia, where we have only seen that uh, there is a great disparity between the urban areas and the rural areas, and also the uh, economic disparity between the people of the state so there is a, that's why everybody is concerned about this but having said that uh, we cannot just stop like that uh, just because of somebody we will stop but this I just did, I have already mentioned that this is not a substitute to classroom but we cannot just deny the fact those who have to use the technology to the best of the benefit suppose now uh, there are some students who in spite of having class in the school, but uh, their parents still they have, they are well off or they could afford, they still engage with tuition. So it is, so I, for me, as I see, this is the way forward. Online is happening, if not in 10 years, if not in 20 years, but it is happening. Uh, and this will be a way forward. So this is the beginning. Yes, there is a constraint. Yes, there is a, uh, concern about those people who could afford, who could get this online, but uh, as I said before, uh, I wish that uh, this pandemic will end in a very short time, or the people could live then, uh, so that people could live normal life and school, classroom studies could be started once, uh, once again. Whatever has happened, it has happened that nobody is prepared for this. Neither the education department prepare for it is, neither the student, neither the teachers, nor the, the parent have prepared for this. So uh, we have no regulation to regulate how they are teaching, but uh, by our only concern is that the student should not sit at home idle. We want to engage the student whether in the form of writing or in the form of online study or in the form of thing because as you know that in the first month uh, the regulation is that even to go outside their home also uh, it is restricted so what they will do at home so let them learn something productive yes uh, there may be that uh, since it's a, a new thing the burden will may be there but I'm sure that the student the, as of now, most of the students are prepared and they can cope with this and moreover, the teachers also after going for one, two months, they will realize how much content the student could observe, how, what we are to teach and what we are not to teach. Well, we have just heard from the education minister that he said that 
online classes is bound to happen and it is going to happen there is no doubt about that and he says that it is the way forward but do you agree that it is the only way forward yeah <coughs> we have heard uh, the minister of education um, his take on online classes to say it's uh, quite easy but to be done practically it's another picture now as i've already mentioned there's a huge rural and urban divide uh, when it comes to students and online learning now of course we do understand that we have to keep the children occupied but at the same time we have to also try to understand as long as digital learning uh, cannot be accessed by all students, I think we should not hurry as uh, uh, Dr. Vasavin has uh, already mentioned. Mm -hmm. We should not you know, go into a mad rush. Let us for a while uh, examine the scenario, keep our children safe. I'm, I'm, as a parent, my first priority is keep my children safe and then at the same time okay we have we, we can go for online learning but at the same time are all the students you know do they have access to this online learning is expensive to some you've got to have the gadget you have to have the uh, smartphones and then you've got to have a data balance which is expensive and for for uh, you know many uh, students coming from a poorly uh, economical uh, background, a social background, it is not possible. And then they also have parents who are not very uh, well um, uh, educated or maybe they are not very well versed with uh, these digital gadgets, technologies, many like that. So uh, we have also, I've also heard from parents that they have only maybe one phone in the house mm -hmm. and then if one member goes out they'll have to wait for that other person to come home and then to finish uh, the assignments given and the homeworks. And then I also heard that there are many families who don't have smartphones. And another thing is, when we talk about online education, I know that here in Shillong, in urban and semi-urban area, it is not the same. There are many school children who are not getting online classes. They're not getting homeworks. And those who are getting, they are getting in bulks in the form of PDF files, in the form of WhatsApp and videos. Like right now, really, we, we really have to take this one step at a time. Children are caught back. Mm. And we have to give them some time, even the parents, to adjust to this new, I know online learning is here to stay. Mm. This post-COVID area, education is going to change. And the government, I hope, will study, you know, will, will, will try to examine in, 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 in this way, in this approach putting the student community uh, first in mind and then the parents and then if they really have this access because in rural areas they don't have access there's mm, bad mm. electricity problem then very weak connection so this online learning is not going to be uniform unless it is not uniform unless it is not inclusive then i don't think it's a good idea for now as as a mother do, do you do you think that these online classes are the only things that can keep a student occupied or a child occupied and as a mother do you feel that bookish knowledge is the only kind of knowledge that our children can have no children are not supposed to be taught by rote uh, students children education is not only about books so right now during the pandemic i would suggest we would uh, think about the curriculum, the mm. subjects given, the courses, the time, the duration, the syllabus, because eventually they have to sit for exams, and I don't know if that is going to be possible or not. Right now, I don't think learning should be concentrated mm. only in books. There are other subjects, mor uh, moral studies, mm. there are life skills, then languages, maybe they can pick up one language, you know, mm. but I don't think it's going to be the same as those days classroom uh, classroom learning right now with online subjects are to be uh, re-evaluated syllabus 
the duration, the flexibility. Mm. We're going to give, we have to give the students flexibility because you can't just, right now we're having for the higher secondaries, we have Zoom classes and uh, we have a marathon classes mm. in the morning. And then at home, we are doing social distancing. We don't have helpers like before. Uh, parents are so pressured, especially those parents who have many children. Yeah. One one kid is okay, mm. but more than four or five kids, it's 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 real it's a real headache, and uh, these matters should also be taken into consideration. If we look at the uh, financial aspect, uh, according to the RBI statewide data that was uh, being retrieved on the 17th of February 2017, Meghalaya's per capita income is only 79,332, which means that uh, an average citizen of Meghalaya is earning only 6,611 per month. At such a time, you sir, do you feel uh, that online education is very important? Because if we also l take a look at what is happening, there are so many self-help groups that have come into existence. And they are actually uh, doing a lot of things in the urban areas itself. So do you feel that the perspective of the education minister that we should go ahead is right? Um, with due respect to the honorable education minister, uh, whatever we heard uh, him just now and what he said in the last assembly mm -hmm. session, uh, they are not match. Uh, he contradict himself, I can say, because during the session he he himself said that around ninety percent of the students they cannot afford uh, gadgets mm -hmm. or smartphones or laptops or computer uh, to go for online uh, classes, <coughs> and he also um, acknowledged the fact that um, the if even if you have the gadgets. If mm -hmm. the uh, internet connectivity or network connectivity is bad, then it's impossible to have any uh, classes. Mm. Now, uh, despite the fact that uh, the income of the people is not the same for everyone, and the budget, uh, the, the gadgets also, mm. the, the 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 prices are not the same. Mm. Different gadgets have different performance uh, capacity or ability. And uh, with all these kinds of uh, new things in mm -hmm. the online classes like Zoom and Google Classroom and so many things, I don't think all the smartphones also can, can cater mm -hmm. to all these um, new avenues. Now, some parents, and particularly in the rural areas, they are struggling about uh, getting food, which is the most essential mm -hmm. uh, community, we can say. Mm -hmm forget about uh, buying smartphones <laughs> and that is why people uh, we see uh, through the um, uh, collection of funds subscriptions either by the local uh, doorbars or by the uh, NGOs and mm. uh, self-help groups they venture out voluntarily to um, distribute food freely I have not seen anyone who will go and distribute a smartphone and maybe if the government is so uh, keen to, mm. <laughs> to have that as a <laughs> way forward, I think by next week we should see some news that the government is distributing smartphones mm, to, to all those uh, students mm. who don't have the gadgets mm -hmm. right now. So uh, this kind of um, perspective, mm. uh, I think it's, uh, it's not suitable to our condition here in mm. our state. Uh, if we look at the news, um, even France, I, I read one article in BBC yesterday, mm. even in France they have a big problem in mm. maintaining this online classes. Mm. So we cannot compare ourselves with them. And uh, we don't want to hear any suicide case in our state because mm. last week only one girl in Kerala, she suicide because uh, uh, she could not attend the online classes and she was bullied. So if okay. these things happen in our state, uh, who will take the responsibility? Mm -hmm. So, according to me as a teacher, mm. even if one student is deprived, that is um, discrimination itself in education. 
in talking about discrimination we can also see that there is an ungodly increase and fee hike at the moment that is happening in the last five years some of the schools and colleges have increased their fees by more than 100 percent whereas the per capita income of a person is yet to go up so let's take a look at what the education minister has to say about the fee hike which is a major concern at this point of time and the lack in quality education that we have in some or in most of the government schools. And come back to fees. That's why I told when the common school fail, when the government fail, common school fail, then the private party come into play. So we are very much uh, appreciate the role of the private parties, the private, the private schools or the missionary schools in giving the best education to the student. But as I said before, uh, I mean, every time that pe the, nobody should profit from education, we will try to do that. And one very important thing is we see as for the college, there is a complaint also that the fees in the college is also is very high. I uh, must tell you that I don't know why. That for the last five, six, seven years, nobody looked into the uh, the fee fixation uh, committee. Never see. So last year, the fee fixation committee sat and recommended the fees for the student. So those fees will be from the basis of the scholarship to be uh, to be uh, to get uh, to be uh, to be given by the government to the student. So before, if the scholarship is about four thousand plus, so this year or next year, we will they will get about fifteen thousand minimum. So the in principle, the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Government of India has already uh, agreed in principle, so we have not get the letter to accepting that, but in principle they have agreed to for the fees which the government fix. So on the basis of that fees, the government will reimburse in the form of scholarship. So we are looking into both this issue together the issue of monitoring the government performance of government school and also uh, help the student help the underprivileged student and also see that the private school or the private entity should not charge the student much in talking about the fee structure then the, the education minister has also pointed out that they that they have uh, sat the together. So, do you feel no that of, uh, looking of, at the fees of the students on the basis of the scholarship is correct? Because shouldn't we actually look at the per capita income instead of the scholarship? This is a very important uh, uh, matter with regard to the fees of students. It had uh, always been uh, on the high side. Because uh, education, if you have uh, noticed, now the fee structure has not been uniform in all colleges and all schools, private schools and ad hoc schools and uh, missionary run schools. These, uh, the fee structure is not the same. Mm. Uh, this is very sad because um, it put a lot of pressure on the parents even if they want uh, their children, their wards to, 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 to study in a good school, they would have to hesitate because mm. the fees there are exorbitantly high. And then uh, w coming to the college level, the fees are incredibly high mm. in many schools, especially in uh, Shillong area. And then with regard to the scholarships, I don't think it has been quite a long time that students have received any scholarship whatsoever.
So they have been uh, asked to uh, submit the forms, but then they did not get. And uh, so the question of reimbursement at this time um, should be uh, left with the government. I hope they do, uh, they, they do that. But then at the same time right now, yeah. uh, you know, education has uh, remained, uh, has stalled for a long time. We have not seen any, uh, any, any changes, positive mm. changes. It has remained the same. If there is a change at all, uh, there has been changes in fees only and infrastructure. But when it comes to quality education and delivering of education, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the for the benefit of the student community, no, there has been no change at all. Especially now with this lockdown, many parents, many uh, families, especially those from the, you know, the marginalized section of uh, society, they're having this big problem how mm. to pay the fees. So I don't know if uh, 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 if I'm speaking of beha on behalf of many parents, but I hope I am. When I say that the government should uh, consider mm. a little bit on the fees, especially for, for, for those mm. uh, students from the rural area, they're not getting classes, mm. they're not getting access to online teachings, and they've got to pay the fees. So I think it'd be very wise mm. if uh, the government should waive the, mm. the, the fees for at least three months. Uh, also, if it's possible with the universities at, at as well, and also the colleges, because you see, there are many students right now who are stranded. Mm. They have returned, most of them. And then many students also, they live in hostels. They have to pay the hostel mm. fees. So I, if uh, it could be possible that they also, you know, the, the hostel mm. uh, owners would uh, uh, waive their rents as well. Because, you know, if there is a pressure on payment of fees, as it has always happened, there have been many students who, 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 who are very promising students, they had to cut short mm -hmm. their education. They that, that's why we have a, a, a huge number of dropouts and uh, they have to stop school because their parents cannot uh, yeah. pay, you know, yeah. support them uh, financially. So uh, at the same time, this uh, child, uh, even if he's gifted, even if he has a potential to become some, something in life, halfway has to stop and then they just that's mm. why we have uh, uh, you know early marriages and broken families mm. and then unemployment issues also there they are not suitable for certain jobs right now we, we saw that mm, you know we we, we need skilled laborers mm. when we are suffering under the you know the dearth of unemployment youths are not getting enough uh, jobs even if they are qualified so they end up doing nothing, just loitering and doing all sort of things that mm. is not uh, profitable at all for the society and themselves. So right now, during this pandem uh, pandemic, with the lockdown going on, there are so many, uh, yeah, pa uh, you know, uh, households that who, who couldn't go for, mm. you know, to earn the daily livelihoods. Mm. So right now, lives matters, livelihood is a concern. Let's see a balance in there, mm. and hopefully, you know, uh, they waive the students' fees. Very interestingly, you have also pointed, you have pointed out towards uh, skilled laborers. We can also look at skilled teachers. If we, if we are to look at the students in today's generation, we can see that the quality of education has diminished year by year. So, uh, Particularly, if we take a look at some of the B.Ed. colleges and uh, institutions that offer B.Ed., the fees are very high. Some are asking for 50,000, while some are selling forms for 1,000 per form. So do you feel that the reason why we are having a diminishing education system in our state, it's because the people who really want to learn cannot afford education? Uh, <laughs> This is a matter which could have been avoided. The consecutive governments throughout the years, they should have given uh, education the top priority. Mm. Because we cannot deny the fact that um, mm. students are the builders of nation, of our country, of our state. Mm. Now, who are going to teach those students? Teachers. Mm. And if teachers are not properly well trained, then how will they teach the students? 
So they are interdependent on each other. Mm. And who will sup sup supervise that or uh, make sure that things run smoothly? Mm. It is the government. Whether it's a private or um, 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 you know, government schools or government aided, they should have been given the same chances. In our state, we have only uh, three uh, be at uh, colleges and uh, I think only two government, uh, one is private if I'm not mistaken. And the amount of uh, teachers that need to be trained are thousands. But these three, they cannot um, um, you know, take admission mm. in such a way that it will cater to all the uh, mm. teachers. Now, that is why uh, even government and even the private uh, be at college, uh, they have the, uh, what can we say, the, the liberty to raise the, the forms, the, the, mm. um, the rate of the forms. They have the liberty to uh, um, increase the admission fee, mm. tuition fee, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Now, uh, from what I know, um, till 2016, uh, around 88% of uh, primary teachers are on train mm. and around 75% like that of upper primary are on train. That also in those SSA schools. Mm. Now what about the rest of the schools? Just now we heard our Honorable Education Minister, he said that he, was, he is very thankful to the contribution made by the private schools. Mm. But do the private teachers there, they, they get help the same mm. way that the mm. other teachers get? So I think um, this matter has been, um, it's, like a, uh, it's like a sick man mm. uh, in the um, education department. The way that it has been handled, um, I'm sorry to say, but uh, the administrators there um, who comes from different ranks, mm. Uh, they are being just uh, transferred from one department to each other. And some of them, they are not uh, academics, uh, uh, academicians. So being transferred from one department, suppose like PWD, and come to education department, mm -hmm. it will be so difficult for them to see the, the, the what is the crux of the matter or what problems to solve mm. or what solution to find. So I think it's high time for the government to come mm. out with a Mm, uh, uh, sound educational mm. policy because the last one that they have given in the draft and which was approved is like a copy paste thing yeah so that is my take on that thank you so much ba we, we cannot however deny the, the fact that the reason why so many schools are at liberty and colleges or any institution for the matter are at liberty to increase the fee hike it's because the government is not really paying attention mm. and if we also look further we can see that there is a desperate need of a ceiling that needs to be put on all these institutions so i will move forward and ask the education minister another question what are some of the important policies of education that needs to be addressed at this point of time immediately. Particularly to the state, uh, the mini categorization of school, category of school, mini category of, uh, category of teachers, and uh, many form of management. So these are the core, the disparity between the pay of the teachers also is very, very high. Some teachers, SSA, they get 19,000 something. Government LP school, they get something in private school. So until and unless we are able to streamline this, it is very difficult. That is number one. But I have seen that it is not possible to streamline as of now because of no management is willing, 
yes the teachers because they, they will benefit them they may agree but the management the sponsoring body will never agree to let go the hold over the managing committee so that is the number one number two the condition of classroom of schools especially government school all over the state that is very pathetic uh, I will tell you that uh, but I'm very much appreciate the concern of our honorable chief minister in 2018 we have sanctioned about 180 school 150 eight, school 8, eight lakh rupees for additional classroom all over the state and last year 2019 110 school all over the state 10 10 lakh and this year uh, about 200 50 we will give uh, through the state budget for about uh, 50, uh, 15 lakh each to different school in the different part of the state this is uh, infrastructure and also coming uh, when we see the government secondary school higher secondary school is so pathetic We have been told that the conditions of the government schools is very pathetic. And uh, the minister has also put forward that he has sanctioned 8, eight lakh rupees. But do you feel that that 8 lakh rupees has been utilized, sir? Uh, last uh, week, Last week or last two weeks when that um, cyclone came, we saw in the videos and in the news that uh, one government school in July was almost uh, wiped out or collapsed. And uh, the walls of the school itself mm. um, almost came down and some part of it already came down. So I think uh, this data that the government provide and the uh, practical works that has been done mm. again uh, they are no match and uh, to like uh, Kong has earlier said to say something is very easy mm. but to see it practically done mm. that is a long way and uh, we we are shocked to to find that um, in some school in rural areas mm. One classroom is being shared by two classes. So, if the government is really serious, mm. it should come out with statistics, make it public, mm. see this has been done. If you sanction the money, or if you have an inauguration, inaugural stone, mm. you should have also the, the, the product, the finished product. We have sanctioned 8,000. After a year, this school, which was earlier like this, mm. it has now become like this. So if we see that kind of positive results, mm. then uh, we can say that, yes, the sanction, the money that has been sanctioned has been put to work. But so far, mm. that is just uh, another dream for us. <laughs> another dream, mm. really. So, uh, that's why I mention again that the education policy has to be very practical. It has to take into account the, um, so many aspects of education. Mm. So in that case, experts who can really understand the problems faced by the students, by the teachers, by the managing um, board mm -hmm. of the school or managing community, and uh, even the um, government itself, they have to come together. Unless uh, that is done, mm. I think uh, deciding by the some people in the table, it'll be again a bourgeois kind of uh, education. That is my opinion on this. When when we take a look at education policy again, if we take a look at all these uh, leading countries in the world, to say for example like Finland, then Singapore, then we have South Korea, 
and all the other other uh, countries in the world with all these le that have all these best education policy they have always focused less on homework and if we take a look at the french education policy they have imported all these household works to be a part of the curriculum and the syllabus and if we take a look at philippines they have made planting of trees as one of the major things that we have that we that we need just like for example today is world environment day mm -hmm. and that is what we are living for mm. if there is no environment mm. yeah. then there is no yes. us yes, so don't true. you feel that this on like online classes is is stealing away too much of time from the students and from the teachers without any productive product that is coming out of it yeah exactly uh, that's why I said uh, we should maybe look at this pandemic uh, maybe as a wake-up call, let's say. Uh, forget being negative all the time. So we are entering a new phase of, uh, of life. You could call mm. the new normal. Mm. Uh, whether this COVID will go away or not, life has to go on. So uh, like uh, with today being the environment, uh, uh, environment day, uh, we do realize how badly as human beings we have degraded mm. uh, the environment to such a, a level where our lives is at stake right now. So I think as parents, as teachers, as uh, educationists, we must all come together to, 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 to teach our children who are also uh, the future generation, our na nation builders as you said. So this uh, a a new awakening call mm. that besides books, besides being bookish, confined to a classroom, learning mm. is more than that. Learning is like a butterfly. You've got a little child in a cocoon, but mm. that cocoon has to change. It metamorphosed into a butterfly. It needs freedom. It has to mm. go somewhere. We cannot just lock our children in one place. Learning is like that. It is a change of the mindset and adaptation to the new situations that crop up with mm -hmm. life and at the same time preparing our children in times like these we parents cannot be there all the time mm. so th that's why i said we cannot confine teaching only to a certain confined class with the old system it's quite medieval as it is compared to other countries they concentrate on life skills mm. All right, to, to, to build a child ability to, to, uh, to, to prepare a child to face life as it comes. So right now our children are not learning mm. much, they are just in the house. And online teaching as I see is not much about helping the child, it's, as, it's, it's like as if finishing the courses, fi finishing mm. the syllabus, I don't know whose call is it, who's mm. making the shot, I don't know. But I think and it is more about profiteering of a certain agency who's catering mm. for internet services, commercialization mm. of, of, of uh, education which had happened mm. with sales of books mm. and syllabus every day, every year changing with a hike in fees, there's no ceiling on it. So right now, a new thing has come. A mm. certain uh, internet provider is profiteering, for, no, we cannot mm. do that because mm. Zoom classes, mm. uh, online classes, it's money, it's mm. expensive. So the, the, the government cannot just throw away its responsibility and say, here, you've got to do this, you have to mm. live with this. No, it, that cannot be done. If we have to go for online teaching, which I think is the mm. new uh, educational scenario, mm. uh, you know, post-COVID age. So I think we have to change the curriculum, yeah. change the syllabus change the duration, we cannot tax our children, mm. we cannot just make them sit in the house. Mm. We need to change the, the, the mm. syllabus also. Mm. As, uh, uh, and I think it would be much better if we prepare the children mm. in these life skills, in moral lessons, you know, in extracurriculum activities like you have mentioned about Finland being the top mm. countries in the world in education, uh, you know, in the education mm. scenario. So, but uh, in, our, in our place, sadly, in Meghalaya also, our mm. uh, literacy rate is quite low mm. uh, compared to Kerala. 
So I don't know what is happening, but uh, I think uh, education should not be confined uh, to books. It's mm -hmm. not only about the fees. We mm. are living in a democratic country. I think uh, mostly education should be free because if we have to go for online learning, we need the data packs, we need the internet, we have to download the materials from, you know, from, from, from mm -hmm. the net, which is mm -hmm. very difficult for even children who have access, good for them, but for, for, for many students who are from the rural area, they don't have a computer, they don't have a mobile phone, the, 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 the parents are daily wages, and mm -hmm. we cannot control our children, what mm -hmm. they do in the internet, we know about cyber crimes, we know mm -hmm. about the threat to our children, the privacy issues, all this, all there. So mm -hmm. these things also should have uh, to be taken into mm -hmm. account. It's not safe. Uh, you have uh, very rightly mentioned that someone somewhere is profiting from all of this because we are seeing a lot of projects that are being sent to the government and they are actually like profiting from them uh, like a lot. For the first uh, 30 days, they will give free trials after which you will have to pay. You have also mentioned uh, quite interestingly about the literacy rate uh, and you have also compared us with Kerala. And quite frankly, in the last five years or so, the five years or more, the government of Meghalaya has also uh, put a best of five for the metric, uh, yeah. for the mm. students that are appearing the metric exams. Mm. And yes, we have indeed seen an increase in the literacy rate, but we are seeing a decrease in quality education. Another thing is, we have also increased, uh, as seen, an increase in fees. Yeah. So can you, uh, can you please share what is the relationship between this literacy rate and actual knowledge of the students? The government always want to give um, a make up to its um, policy to its uh, functions mm. machinery whatever it is by projecting a very good literacy rate I would strongly suggest that it should have a very well defined statistics mm. about the drop rate also mm. at a school or college drop rate the relation here, first thing first, is like uh, the fees, which is uh, act horse return, and, 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 and keep increasing year by year. We should consider uh, the fact that some students, they are orphans, and they work in the daytime, and they mm. when go to school in the morning. True. And uh, some uh, families are uh, in the marginalized sector, that uh, it is impossible for them to mm -hmm. to pay that kind of fees. Mm. Secondly, uh, see even in, in even during this pandemic also, it is very sad to uh, hear reports that some schools here in Shillong only in Maulai only mm. they are uh, hiking the fees. Mm. And when parents mm. try to talk to the administrators. They, they they didn't even pay attention mm. now when you see at all these things a big literacy rate mm. will not uh, doesn't mean that you have a quality education mm. what happened in kerala the day before yesterday or one of mm. these days with that uh, uh, the killing of an elephant mm. it clearly shows that being a uh, very the highest literacy rate in the country, but if you don't have the the what do you say the, the consciousness, the passion, mm. Mm, the, the conscience of a person, mm. Mm, that is which is uh, more important than being educated. So that rate is uh, useless. Mm. So yeah. pointing out to that, I would yeah. just like to conclude by saying that. Um, uh, just as our Honourable mm. Education Minister mentioned in the first uh, answer to your question, that mm. uh, he was so sure, he is so sure that the pandemic will end soon. So, 
we should also take this um, lockdown and the pandemic situation mm. as a vacation, as a pause, and then let's restart things from where mm. we left off. Why are you pushing so much about this um, online classes? And then uh, when we talk about the quality education, which cannot mm. be attained in a classroom, mm. how can you expect that quality education will come from these online classes? So things have to be, we have to have um, that conscience in you, not mm. like uh, what happened in Kerala. So uh, I would like to uh, put a last question to you. What do you think is the most important thing at this point of time for the government of Meghalaya to address when it comes to education? Mm. As we are in this pandemic now, we are talking about the pandemic. Uh, the the most serious things which um, or the most immediate thing which the government can can do is to at least open a kind of a grievances portal mm. for students for teachers mm. those who can access online they can write their grievances through a portal those who cannot you give them some address mm. so that they can write letters yeah. or give at least 10 to 15 number phones Mm. so that uh, parents or students they can call okay. that is one thing and another thing is um, uh, uh, the, the situation is such in a way that we, we are now uh, seeing yeah. rise in, in, in cases okay I, I think okay. Uh, we are quickly running out of time uh, we have come to the end of this very interesting topic that we have at hand I would like to end by uh, quoting William Henry Davies, he says, What is this life if full of care we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the boughs and stay as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts and grass. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come towards the end of Straight Talks for today's episode. Thank you so much. Good night. This is Mebon Lingdo R. Kublai Shibon Ublai Undang Yai Kurku Yapi.